Hello and welcome back to Rage Gaming and welcome to Wo Long. We've been lucky enough to try out the game a little bit before its release, giving me the opportunity to play through the game a good chunk at the very least and give you a mostly spoiler free first impressions look like a review or an overview to give you an idea of the way this game works, my thoughts on all of it and hopefully give you an idea if this is a game that you should be interested in. Fans of Team Ninja are probably going to be interested in it no matter what and if you've played games like Neo or Neo 2 you should know what you're getting into. Although this is a new take on that style of of game noticeably different and in my opinion preferably if you are a fan of souls and souls likes maybe you've played the game Sekiro then these are familiar and app comparisons to make but Wo Long stands on its own as quite a unique experience bringing some interesting things to the table a lot of systems and a lot of mechanics much like other Team Ninja games and in my opinion it has its ups and downs the combat being absolutely incredible and the pile of systems being a little bit overwhelming when you first encounter them but with that introduction out the way let's begin by talking about what I think is the best thing in this game, the combat. The combat mechanics are fun and varied, but what really matters here is the feel. You know, in any game of this nature, the hit weight needs to be there, and my god is it there. You flow around the fight, countering attacks, redirecting them, or evading them, building and spending your main resource known as spirit, maximizing your weapon of many weapon types and different playstyles, mixing that up with magical ability known as wizardry, breaking the enemy, stunning and critically destroying them, or countering their massive attacks all kind of augmented by the morale system which i will explain but yeah it's a lot going on all at once but once you get into the flow of it my god is it fun it just feels good it looks good so let's go through each thing and explain how it works with your melee weapon, you have your light attack combos and your spirit attacks. So I would call this like light attacks and heavy attacks. Light attacks cost really nothing to do and vary depending on what weapon you're using, as well as your heavy slash spirit attack. That consumes spirit. Each weapon also comes with a unique weapon skill known as a martial art, which is basically a special attack that costs spirit to use. Now, depending on which weapon you've got, you might get a different martial art. But you might have, say, one pair of dual blades and another pair of dual blades, and they have completely different martial arts because there's a nice variety per weapon. Then you've got your ranged options, which essentially comes down to throwing items or using, say, a bow or crossbow. With a bow or crossbow, you're just aiming and trying to hit them in the head. And you're doing much the same with a thrown item, although you might get, you know, augmented effects like poison or fire bombs. But it's pretty standard and basically the same system as Neo. Now, wizardry, aka magic, is quite interesting. You have four slots to use elemental magic, but it also costs spirit to use. And you can't use certain magic unless you've got a enough morale. Wizardry of this game though comes in five elements. You've got things like lightning, water aka ice, you've got fire, there's metal which is poison attacks, and then we have earth finally. These provide debuffs to enemies or damage over time, a burst of damage, maybe CC. Ultimately you can only have four equipped at any one time, but every time you stop by like one of the main flags, which is basically a bonfire in this game, you can re-equip. Lastly there's the countering, which is basically uh, pressing the counter button, which you can do standing or moving, so you can use it as an evade, to re redirect an enemy's attack and then leave them vulnerable. If you successfully land a counter by basically pressing it at the exact last moment before a blow lands, you will redirect and completely nullify the damage. And you will build spirit, as well as damaging their spirit greatly. This is enhanced when they're trying to do a critical attack, like a super powerful attack shown by the red sort of circle. If that hits you, it's going to be bad for many reasons. Obviously, it's going to really hurt. But if you counter those, you get a massive spirit boost, a huge stagger on the enemy, and it leads to big things. So your usual combat has you managing your melee combos, your special spirit attacks, your martial arts, you've got the ranged options you might throw, you've got your magic and the four different types and slots that you're actively using in that moment, and you're managing your spirit, spending it and building it as fast as possible while breaking the enemies. Now the spirit system is obviously really important. You spend it when you're using martial arts, when you're using magic, when you're using the heavy spirit attacks, even when you're dodging and evading or attacking and countering. Now having more spirit means you can actually spend it to enhance an ability's damage, but if you're dumb and overuse it, you'll end up staggering yourself. You'll put yourself so empty on spirit that a single attack, even if you block it, will full stun you, which is not a good thing. So very intentional use of your abilities that use spirit, which is a lot, is vitally important. You can't just blindly spam counters. You can't just blindly spam magic. And you can't just blindly spam your weapon abilities. You must manage your spirit. And that really comes down to perfectly timed counters as the basis of building it. If you do break an enemy's spirit though, they are full stunned and that leaves them 
exposed to a spirit attack, which will do a special critical animation, where you'll either leap up in the air and slam down, pierce through them, knock them flying, whatever it is, it'll do a lot of damage, and they're vitally important in a boss fight, where it's going to be where you get most of your damage in one hit. This can be very much compared, then, to the posture system of Sekiro, but you're not spending posture on abilities and countering in the same way as you are here in Wolong. Finally, there's the morale and fortified morale system. Basically, every enemy has a morale sort of starting point. Let's say an enemy has 10 morale and you're currently at 5. That means the enemy is going to be pretty tough for you. Let's say you're at 5 morale and the enemy is at 20. That is going to be an absolutely insane fight. You've probably not got any chance of winning. You gain morale by fighting, by defeating enemies, by placing flags. As you place more flags, that fortifies morale, because when you die, your morale goes down. So when you fortify your morale by placing flags around the area by fully exploring, you actually protect yourself. So if you die, you won't go below that point. Your fortified morale is at 10, you die at 11, you're not going to go below 10. By defeating leaders in the area, you can also lower morale of enemies nearby, making them easier. Basically, it's an inbuilt difficulty modifier. It's up to you. How much of the level do you want to explore and clear, or do you want to rush straight to the final boss? and have an incredibly difficult fight because your morale is so much lower than the boss's. You can make that boss actually easier by raising your morale above it. Say the boss is at 20 morale and you've grinded through the level and you've really worked your way up to say 25. Now that boss is going to take so much damage every time you hit it. It's quite an interesting system and it affects the whole aspect of combat. With the Souls-like genre of game having that like there should be an easy mode or it should never have an easy mode debate that comes up every time a new one releases. I think this is an incredibly smart way to answer that problem. Letting players choose how hard things are going to be for them and the best players can bypass massive chunks of the game and speed run to their heart's content if they're willing to deal with the fact that the boss is going to one shot them or you know two hit them really quickly if they aren't playing perfectly. So yeah that's my overview of the combat and the different stuff that works inside of it. I think it's absolutely fantastic but what you're probably seeing at this point is a lot of systems, and I've barely scratched the surface there. I just talked about combat directly. You see, there's a lot of stuff outside of combat that demands your attention, or it'll pull you down and ruin the experience. And I don't think it's exactly intuitive to learn this, because, you know, even in the first level, so much is thrown at you, and a lot feels quite unexplained, or it pops up on screen for like 10 seconds, and it's gone forever, and you better have learned it. You know, morale and fortified morale, that is vital. If you don't understand how it works, you can end up maybe like being under morale when you're in a boss fight and thinking this game is just busted and poorly balanced. Take a look at leveling. You have those five aspects to level and each level will affect your health, your attack power, your spirit defense, spirit sustain, spell buff duration, your stealth, spirit gain rate or consumption rates, and then you got your equipment weight and even your element abilities. It's a lot to consider and then there's five different options for each one. It's pretty ridiculous when you just look at it. You can make this a bit easier to understand if you have played a Souls game. Imagine you're just leveling five different traits so that'd be like vigor, strength, dex, magic, and then the utility stuff. The green one gives you the most health when you level it up, but you do get health every time you level any of these. Another aspect of playing this game that you're definitely going to be dealing with is the gear system, which I find just a bit overwhelming. You'll defeat an enemy and you'll get like a chess piece. You'll defeat the next enemy, he'll give you like a sword. You'll pick up like some boots. Now you find a talisman. Kill an enemy, you got another chess piece. It's so much, you're constantly getting them and there's all these stats and they have different rarities and then they have skills on them and you're getting like 15 every area you play. It's absolutely outrageous. And they're all basically RNG, whatever you get, based on like the rarity and what skills it might have. It's pretty overwhelming when you first look at it, and it still kind of is now to me. And it's not until you reach the hub, which is a few hours into the game, mind you, that you finally unlock skill swapping. So you can take skills that are on a weapon and then put a new one on yours. Basically, every time you take skills off weapons, you get some gems, and then you spend gems to put new skills on your preferred weapon or armor. And then there's like dismantling, buying and selling. It's so much to manage outside of just gameplay, that I find it just an absolute faff. Some people are going to really enjoy this type of progression, where you're collecting loads of things and sniping your favorite skills and building up to certain things. But for me, I much prefer it when I get one piece of armor and I'm like, oh, that's cool. It has these stats. I'll use that for that. Or maybe I won't. And that's it. In this game, you'll get 15 copies of the exact same chess piece with different skills and different values. And you got to work out which is better because it's not clear. 
Now, when it comes to builds, long term, you'll basically, you'll get an ideal weapon. So you pick a weapon type. I really like the duo swords. And you'll find a specific pair of duo swords, say, that have, hey, I like that skill and that skill. And I want both of them on one weapon. There we go. We've got that. Then there's the actual skills that are on the weapon itself. So you could make lightning damage, deal more damage, get some health on there, improve your spirit damage, maybe make magic in general better, make buffs last longer. There's loads of different skills in this game. With me, you Using dual blades, I would like to improve the weapon damage, and I have a lightning build, so I'd like to improve the lightning damage. Stuff like that, I'm trying to make an ideal weapon out of. Then we have like wizardry, where you're managing your spells as you go. It's very easy to get yourself a weak spell from each of uh, four different types. So you might have like a water one, you might have a fire one, an earth one, and then a lightning one. And then you use those depending on what you're fighting. So, you know, if something's weak to lightning, then that's great. As you might expect, it's kind of like rock, paper, scissors. Water is great to use against a fire enemy. I should also mention the story, which is pretty generic. Honestly, it's quite one note. It's quite obvious what's going on in the world. It really reminds me of Dynasty Warriors, actually, that series, those characters and the way storytelling was done in that. You've got like the big bad, which is this creepy old guy that's stealing powers and manipulating events, turning people into demons, convincing them they've got to. And there's monsters around the world, lots of war between factions, a lot of corruption, with the standout characters just basically being like anti-corruption, anti-demon, and trying to stop it, banding together to do so. So the story is definitely not necessarily the biggest selling point for this game that's for sure but it's interesting enough and if you're into the kind of dynasty warrior flavor it'll work but now it's time for our little conclusion with my first impressions overview i find this game is largely carried by the fun of the gameplay and the combat and i think it's well worth playing if you're a fan of the souls like genre of game and especially if you enjoyed Sekiro as a Souls fan. If this is you, you should go in expecting really fun gameplay because it absolutely is. But you've got to be prepared to learn a lot of outside combat things to make the combat more fun and functional. The more you engage with it, the better it's going to be. And I'm sure you're going to know that if you've played previous Team Ninja games or you played the Neo series. Personally, I'd prefer less systems and a more streamlined, simpler version of certain things like that gear system I was mentioning. I don't need a new weapon or armor every three seconds that I've got to go check and then work out if there's a skill there that's even remotely relevant. I'd prefer to more naturally be upgraded and let me make the choices that matter. But again, I know the target audience for these games kind of expect and really enjoy this stuff. So I don't begrudge it and I kind of expected it. If the gameplay looks engaging and interesting to you, I reckon you're gonna have a really good time with this. But yeah, I guess that's my overview and main things I wanted to talk about for this game. I hope this look at the game and explanation of these different things helps you make your own informed decision on whether this is a game for you. For now though, I've been Hollow, you've been you, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye